so it it was hell and it and it absolutely killed me so then he started using children against me and he it just just gradually just more and more and more and i would just feel sick every single day and when i'd go and pick them up from school it was a you know one and a half hour drive there this was just for like two hours to see them and then and one and a half, and i used to just cry my eyes out on the way home every single time and i'd be doing that journey up to three times a week you know wow. and yeah so you and know. so then he eventually got the children no, to live with him yeah so um the children basically what happened was I went into, um, we finally settled out of, well, we settled on something. He said, okay, and we were meant to be going to court in the September. And that July or August, he said, okay, listen, um, you know, finally, after six years of hell, he said to me, okay, let, you know, let's just settle on this and we'll, um, we'll do the finances and we'll confirm it in court in September. So I literally clapped, I had a nervous breakdown. I had an absolute nervous breakdown and then checked into the Priory because I just couldn't, I just couldn't, I, I just, I was six years of hell and then suddenly it was like, so I checked into the Priory and I was meant to be coming out in September for that court date. Anyway, they wouldn't let me out. The Priory would not let me out. So my parents were going there basically um, on my behalf and I remember calling my son from the Priory and I go, hi darling, what are you doing? And he goes, mommy, daddy doesn't want me to tell you, but I'm looking at a new school. I, I literally thought I was going to have a heart attack. And I, it was in the countryside. It wasn't in London. It wasn't the school he was in in London. And instead I went, oh, darling, do you like it? How is it? You know, oh, mom, yeah, I really like it. And I just, I screamed after the, after the phone call, I collapsed and screamed because he took them out of their schools in London and put them in schools in the countryside, you know, an hour and a half away from me without telling me. And I couldn't get a court date for a year afterwards to try and fight for them to get them back. They wouldn't give me a court date. And by the time that year came by, um, they wouldn't let them move out of the school because um, they were settled in them. So right. that's when it all began. But um, yeah, he did that. Totally and then they life. just stayed in those schools. That's kind of they where stayed things in stayed. Those schools down at, yeah, in the country, an hour and a half away. And, you know, it didn't matter what I, I mean, I, everything. There is nothing that I didn't do that, you know, all my family did, or my friends. And, you know, it's not just me that doesn't see my children. None of my family have, you know, none of my best friends who they grew up with have, you know, their godparents and stuff. It, you know, it's been hell on all of us. It's not just me. And, you know, my poor parents, they just, you know, they were so close to them. And yet this man is just poisoned, you know, and he, and he keeps promising. Oh yeah, you can see them now. You can see, you know, like yeah, in the summer when they've done their exam, da, da, da. and they kept leading all, not me, because he would never let me see them, but all my family and all my friends on. And then last minute, just take it away like that. So not one of us have seen them in six years. Wow. And they're still oh, under 18. <laughs> Now? No, my son's oh. 20, my oh, wow. daughter's 17, you know, every birthday, every Christmas, I mean, I just, I, you know, I just become a total wreck, but, you know, I've got to get on with my life now. It's been six years and I have to, you know, I have fought really hard in the last, you know, because it, four years was, four and a half years, five years was really tough. I mean, it was really tough. You know, there is a grieving period, I realized, because I've been to therapy about it. And there is a grieving period of five years and it's like grieving. I mean, I was just, you know, it was debilitating. And then, you know, I think in the last year, it's like, as long as they're happy, you know, healthy, you know, they've had a good education, they go on, you know, I, I have to, I have to now live and be me. And, you know, and that's, and that was also why I didn't want to get into relationships. I just wanted to know who I was and, you know, what I was about. And, you know, as long as I can lay my head on my pillow at night and know that I am, you know, being the best person I can be that day, that is, that's all I can do.